Just fumbled. Picked up by Kenneth Olivode. And he runs it in from the sixth. And Colorado has upset UCLA. And there it is. Are you kidding me? Jumper from 15 and will knock it down. Kennedy Leonard. Over left, there's a slip screen inside. Actually elevates and slams with the left hand. Is Steel Peters with the deflection taken by Collier. Up court Peters elevates and slams with the right hand. Oh, brace. Hi again, and welcome to the Buffalo Stampede. I'm Mark Johnson of KOA Radio, your play by play voice of the Buffs. What a weekend for the University of Colorado. Men's basketball team gets two victories over Washington and Washington State. One five of six after that 0 7 start. And now they're heading off to Oregon to take on the Beavers and the Ducks. Head coach Tad Boyle joining us. I don't know where you found the defense here about six games ago, but, but that is really fueling this team right now. It really is. We're playing with great energy and, and, and great passion and our hands are active. We're getting our hands on a lot of balls. We well, we turned Washington State over 24 times. We haven't done that in a long, long time. So um, I'm really happy with the way we're playing right now and, and, and the offense is coming as well. So hopefully this team is gelling and coming together at the right time. We know, look, uh, what's past is past and whether it's good or bad mm -hmm. and it's all about uh, moving forward. But uh, it was a good weekend. Ted, what do you think the key has been? I mean, I, listen, you've been preaching defense defense since day one. I know that. Yep. And what clicked do you suppose? I, I, it's just the players in that locker room. I mean, until they uh, kind of come together, until they decide that uh, they're going to do it, uh, you know, it's just a coach uh, flapping his gums. <laughs> and that's that's really the, the case. And, and, and every, you know, every team I've been around, there's been one or two guys, I think Derek White, I think... Uh, uh, you know, Wesley and Xavier is, is two seniors. Uh, you know, their voices have to be heard, and it has to permeate throughout the rest of the team. And and I think hopefully that they're just understanding and, and going out and getting it done. 81-66 was the game on Thursday night with the victory over the Huskies. I will say this: when George King is playing as active as he does and rebounding the way he does, I do think that kind of you know lifts all boats, if you will, in the harbor. Absolutely. And George has got you know the physical ability because he's so big and strong, and he can play multiple positions. And you know the two games that that uh, Wes and and XJ were out of, you know he had to play inside a little bit uh, more than usual. Did a great job. So yeah, George is a is a, a very capable perimeter defender and a very capable post defender, and uh, that that's helped as well. It also doesn't hurt when the Buffaloes, by the way, over the course of those two games against the Huskies and the Cougars, only had what 19 turnovers, I think, total in the two games. Taking care of the basketball is always uh, at the top of our list offensively. Just making sure we get a great every time because we do have good shooters in this team we're moving the ball better we're sharing the ball our assist numbers have really gone up here uh, lately and our turnovers have gone down and that that really helps your efficiency so a lot of a lot of guys Dom Collier's playing a lot better mm -hmm. for us I mean Derek is just I can't say enough about Derek White I mean we're almost starting to take him for granted for <laughs> you know getting 20 points uh, you know every night out and, and, and making our our engine run you know, I was going to say with him, too, as, as good as he was early in the season, there's almost a comfort level you kind of see with him right now. Maybe he's starting to believe how good he can actually be. Without a doubt. Uh, comfort level, confidence level, uh, urgency level, uh, it's all moved up for Derek White. Yeah, playing some very fantastic basketball right now. Forcing turnovers. I mean, you can play good defense and defend and rebound those kind of things. But there's something a little extra that happens when you're forcing turnovers, isn't there? There is, and and look, the other team has to oblige. Sure, that's right. <laughs> because uh, yeah, the higher you go in in college basketball, the harder it is to turn you know good players and good teams and and uh, over because uh, they take care of the basketball pretty well. But uh, you know the the whole key is to to exert your will and, and put pressure on them, constant pressure in terms of on the ball in the passing lanes and be an alert and that's I, you know it, our, our, our change started at the Oregon game yes. and, and I, I, I use the word alertness because I think defensively that can't be overemphasized I mean being alert where you're at on the floor whether you're guarding the ball you're away from the ball being alert to what's happening uh, is a key in the defensive scheme I'm gonna ask you kind of an odd question you, you didn't want it to happen but you, you sat two fifth-year guys for two games Ultimately, could that end up helping you from the standpoint of you you were calling upon younger guys who weren't playing as many minutes to get minutes and put them in a responsible situation, and they responded? Without a doubt. Hmm. Without a doubt. It didn't want it to happen. It happened. You deal with it. Uh, but the confidence that Lucas Seward and Torrey Miller uh, got 
uh, themselves and the confidence that now I have in sure. them that maybe was a little bit shakier before, uh, it's gone. So uh, makes us a deeper team, makes us a more uh, efficient team. And and guess what? Now those other t two guys, uh, we can we can get it done now with sure. with without their. Now we need X J and Wes uh, to play well to be as good as we can be. There's no doubt about that. But they're not indisposable, and they understand that, and our team understands that, and, and I think it's uh, going to help us going forward. Well, I want those guys to really appreciate being on the floor as we move forward. Buffaloes want to make some noise down a the stretch. They've got five games remaining. They're on the road against Oregon, Oregon State this week up in the Great Northwest. Coach, good luck this week. Thank you. Head coach Stad Boyle, he and the Buffaloes won five of six. Speaking of starting off a season with a bang, we're going to talk lacrosse, and Elliott will join us next. What a win to open up the campaign. That's straight ahead here in the Buffalo Stampede. Patience. Finding McClay underneath to the score. Katie McClay, Colorado, 11 to 10, the final score. The Buffs knock off the number nine team in the country. An exciting finish to start the season with the CU women's lacrosse team and Elliott joining us. What a victory for the Buffaloes. 11 to 10 as they knock off number nine Northwestern in overtime. Your school, start to the season, year number four. Boy, you know how to start a campaign here. That was good stuff. <laughs> yeah, it was a very exciting start for sure for our girls and, and our first real big win over a ranked team. What did it mean for you, though? I mean, you've got the history with Northwestern and the coach there and all that. That's That's got to be personally satisfying, I would think. You know, you might think it's it's a little weird, you know, you never want to see where you were to school, you know, lose or the coach lose. You know, I have so much respect for Kelly in that program that it was a little tough actually winning. Sure. Um, but very exciting for our girls who have worked so hard and especially for our senior class in their final year. What does it say though about where you've got the program? You've been building this thing. That's not something that many people get a chance to do. Build a program from the foundation up. So uh, to see them go out and play like that, uh, personally satisfying for you? Yeah, definitely. I think very satisfying. I think very proud of them across the board. I think, you know, we haven't been practicing that much a couple weeks, but we went to Australia in December, and I think that really helped us. Just a little game experience, a little bonding. And to watch them go out there and just play as hard as they could was, was an amazing feeling. And fortunately enough, we, we finished on the right end yesterday in overtime. What, what did you do well during that game that allowed you to get the victory? Um, I really think our kids just played hard. You know, we struggled on draw controls against Northwestern. I think going into that game, we were, had lost 35 and won nine in over two years, which is not very good. Um, and yesterday, I thought we played pretty evenly in those. You know, Darby and Marie, who take the draw for us, did an awesome job. Our defense played well, contained them. We got some goals from the defensive end, which was amazing and really, I think, fired up the team. And then offensively, everyone played well together, which is what they need to do. How about uh, between the pipes, your goaltender, Paige Sunkinson, uh, had a career high 19 saves? Yeah, Paige is amazing. She's always amazing, I think. You know, she's so consistent. One thing, we are not always as a team, but hopefully we will be this year. But Paige is always consistent, and she really kept us in the beginning of the game. I mean, I feel like she had save after save after save in the first 10 minutes of the game, which really allowed us to keep going and, and get some momentum. How was the defense in front of her? Great. I think the defense played well. They're, Northwestern's such a talented team. They have so many weapons that we just kept focusing on contain them, contain them, contain them. And I thought the girls did a great job at that. This kind of sets the bar then for you. I mean, when you start out, out of the blocks like this with a big victory, <laughs> it, does it raise the bar in terms of the expectations you have for this group, or, or were you high on them to begin with? Um, I think our expectations were high to begin with. You know, we we really believe in ourselves. We know it's going to be hard work, and, and this is just one game. And, you know, yesterday they got to enjoy it, and today Today we're back to work and we're getting focused on UMass and, and that's our next big game and that's a huge game for us. You mentioned that trip to Australia this winter. Well, what do you think that did for your team? I think it really just allowed us to get more game experience. You know, coming into this, I felt like we had three games under our belt. We got to play against some of the best players in the world. Um, and then just bonding across the board. I think being in a different country, a different place, having the team together for, you know, 12 days on the road like that was really a neat experience. This is a bit of transition here and I think you 
and I talked in a pregame show of our uh, basketball broadcast last week about the final year in the conference before you move to the Pac-12 conference. That's kind of exciting stuff for your program. Yeah, very exciting. You know, the MPSF has been great for us. We're really excited about competing in it this year. You know, we're hoping to make our conference tournament again and, and try to finish on top there, too. Mm -hmm. um, but we have a long way to go before that, obviously. Um, and then transitioning into the Pac-12 is going to be amazing. I think our senior class is sad they're not going to get to play in the Pac-12. Sure. Um, but we're really excited about that. Well, what does that first senior class mean for you? Um, it means everything, I think. You know, there's such a great group of young ladies across the board, and I think they've really built a great foundation here. And they've had to put in a lot of work and, and really believe in themselves. And just watching how much they've grown on and off the field over the last four years is it's incredible. It's, it's really incredible, and it's crazy to think they're seniors. <laughs> yeah, they're finally seniors after four years. And, and uh, next up here, another great challenge. You've got to take on a UMass team. It's actually down in Florida. You don't go to Boston. It's winter time. Got to go down south. Right? Exactly. <laughs> but another great challenge for the Buffaloes. Yeah, UMass is is a great team. They're coached by a Northwestern alum as well. Um, Those and Wildcats are everywhere. <laughs> the Wildcats are everywhere. Um, they're very talented. They're fast. They're athletic. Um, they have a great defense, they have a great goalie that's playing right now, um, a strong offense, so it'll be another huge challenge for us and, and a great challenge because, you know, if you want to be successful, you have to rebound, you got to play the best teams and you got to be able to play them back to back and come out with wins. Well, great start. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much. All right, that's Ann Elliott, women's lacrosse coach. They get off to a great start with that victory over Northwestern up next on the road in Florida. Take on UMass. We're talking women's basketball. J.R. Payne after a split in the Bay Area. She'll join us next year in the Stampede. Welcome back to the Stampede, talking women's basketball. J.R. Payne joining us. They got back from a good road trip on the Bay Area. They ended up having a split, winning on Sunday at Cal on Friday night, lost at Stanford. And I thought you were going to get that one. I, I know, thought you were going to have so a sweep we. there. Well, you know what? When we were at Stanford, um, we led for almost three quarters. Right. We gave up the lead with about one second left in the third quarter, but we did play a very good, well, very good three quarters, and then the fourth quarter kind of did us in. Buffs hadn't beaten Stanford in 15 years. To talk about the early portions of that game, what was going well for Colorado? Well, we were transitioning well. Uh, we were mm -hmm. executing well. Uh, I didn't think we really rebounded particularly well throughout the entire game, and, and if we had been able to rebound earlier, I think we could have opened it up a little bit more. Mm -hmm. You rebound well against the uh, Cardinal? Or not? We didn't. No. no, and we needed to. You know, they're just too good of a team. You make mis you make a mistake, they make you pay for it. We needed to be able to rebound to sort of make up for that. Mackenzie Ellis leads away with 15 points. You know the thing that stuns me every week we do the show. Yeah. And it seems like every week I'm talking about somebody it's else different player, who's yeah. stepping up and giving a nice performance. Yeah, which is wonderful. I mean, Kennedy Leonard has been sort of our rock throughout the right. season, but but you're right. I mean, it was Zoe, Zoe Corial yesterday, and it was Kenzie, and it was, you know, Alexis, and it's been Ariana. Mm -hmm. It's been a lot of different people. Which is fantastic for us. Yeah, good depth on the team. You know, it was the first time we've seen Lauren Huggins this season. She came back from injury. Yes. How was that for you? Yes, it was great. I mean, she's she's nervous as heck. You know, she hasn't played <laughs> since June, and she's been here for five years. I tell her, you're an old lady. You've played more than anybody. But um, but she was nervous. You know, it, it's hard to just jump back in. I had warned her, I'm going to put you in at this time for this amount of time. And, um, you know, she came in. She did better against the Cal game. Just felt a little bit more comfortable, I think. Um, but we're really hoping that she can continue to play down the stretch. When you've got a player like that, do you have to kind of pull them back a little bit because they probably they just want to get back out there and compete, yeah. right? Yeah, they do. And you know, for for Huggy, we had to try to ease her into practice. You know, mm -hmm. she would do shooting drills, and we said we just need you to get a couple of live reps, and then you can play. Um, so yeah, we're excited that she's back on the floor. All right, fast forward to the game on Sunday. Colorado wins at number twenty four Cal, sixty four fifty nine. Snap the sixteen game road conference losing streak. Great yeah. performance by your team. Thank you. Yeah. You know, we've had so many games like that where we were we were up at halftime, we were close, we started to lose the lead and in the end we just couldn't hang on to it so you know I was so happy for our team I almost burst into tears when the buzzer sounded <laughs> I just was so happy for them you know I saw their in a timeout in the fourth quarter I saw their faces and they started to hang their heads and you know we literally picked 
Kennedy's chin up and said, let's go. Uh -huh. Like, and Coach T was saying, smile. They're the ones with the pressure. We got nothing to lose. Let's go for it. There, there is something to be said, though, with that concept of kind of getting the monkey off your back, though, right? Yes. When you've done it and, and you kind of relieve that pressure, isn't Oh, my it? goodness. That's what was so great about it. Mm -hmm. Just get that monkey off your back. We know we can win these games. And just to get it done was so good. Zoe Coriel gave you a double-double that game, 16-15. Yes. to 15. Yeah, career high in points, career yeah. high in rebounds. Um, had, you know, twice as many rebounds as the leading rebounder in our conference yesterday that she was going against. So it was just in front of her family, in front of her high school coaches, just so special for her. Are you playing the best basketball right now that you played all season long? Oh, gosh, I don't know. You know, it's different basketball. Like, I thought we were doing a really good job early in the season. We were 10-0 beat Kentucky and did some mm -hmm. really good things. But at that point, we were just transitioning, which we like to do. Um, we didn't really have great execution, and we hadn't faced any adversity. But I thought yesterday... We, we did exactly what we wanted to do. We did the game plan, was executed from beginning to end. And so I think that, you know, is really good basketball well, for I us. Well, I asked a question based on this. Uh, we've talked before about what the Pac-12 means in women's basketball. It's hands down the best conference, top to bottom, yep. in the country. And yet, despite struggles early on, this team seems to be finding a rhythm right now. We are, yeah. And like you said, different people are doing doing really well on different nights. If we could get Coryell to go for 16 and 15, Kennedy to go for 20, and Lexi to go for, you know, if everybody hits on the same night, we can beat anybody, and that's pretty cool. <laughs> They'll be beating Golden State the day that that's happens. That's right, right? that's right. Knocking Watch everybody out. out. It also doesn't hurt when you're not turning the ball over, and you did not turn the ball over We Kelly. did not, and that's something that we're very proud of. We have smart guards that take care of the basketball, so when we can limit ourselves to 10 and less, we have a great chance to win. All right, now you got a challenge coming up. Uh, the men are on the road against the Oregon teams. You've got the Oregon teams coming in here yeah. and a top 10 team on Friday night. Yeah, and Oregon State is, you know, they're just so good. They're beatable. You know, people mm -hmm. beat them. USC beat them the other night. Um, you know, but they're very good. They have one of the best guards in the country on their team, six-foot point guard who's very smart, very savvy. Um, and then they've got shooters, bigs. They've got a little bit of everything, but it'll be a great challenge. Playing at home, your, your team, is you're starting to get that, that sense of urgency that your seniors for figuring it's just, just about over? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, senior night is, is just two games away. So they are feeling that way. I think our team is feeling that way. We want to do well for our seniors, um, and we love planning cores. What are you thinking? The bus make some noise down the stretch here? You know we're, the gonna, we're sure going to try. <laughs> that's the plan. <laughs> I like it. Positivity. Coach, good luck this weekend. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right. That's the, the Beavers of Oregon State in here on Friday night to take on J.R. Payne and the Colorado women's basketball team. We're going to take the quick time out here on the Stampede. When we come back. We're talking tennis. That comes your way next. Busy weekend for the Buffs, and you can follow all of it by checking out the media schedule at cubuffs.com. The men's basketball team kicks off the weekend at Oregon State on Thursday night. That game tips off at 7 p.m. Mountain Time. It'll be live on Pac-12 Network and the Colorado Basketball Network. The women's team also takes on Oregon State, but at home on Friday night at 8 p.m. That game at Coors will be broadcast on the Pac-12 Network. Saturday, the men are at number five Oregon to take on the Ducks. That huge matchup tips off at 1 p.m. Mountain, and it'll be live on Fox and the Colorado Basketball Network. And finally, the women wrap up the weekend at home against Oregon at noon on Sunday. That game will be broadcast on the Pac-12 Network. As always, you can check out cubuffs.com for all upcoming games and where you can watch them. Well, it was really intense. Even though it was 4-2, it feels like it was 4-3. The last match was really intense. I'm really glad Belle closed it out, so I'm really happy for her. Welcome back to the Buffalo Stampede. We're covering the gamut. We've talked men's and women's basketball across, now tennis. Nicole Keneally is joining us. 6-1 and one of the Buffalo's women's tennis team after a win over Utah State. 4-2. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. You're playing well. What's going on here? The team is playing fantastic. Yeah. They're working hard. They're really coming together well. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had a little adversity over the last couple of weeks, but we've come through, and I think we're showing our toughness and our resilience. Yeah, undefeated at home. Only loss was to DU. Tell me a little bit about your lone senior, Nuria or Mino Ruiz. Did I get the name right? I believe so. <laughs> okay, fantastic. So, yeah. How's she been playing? She's she's playing fantastic. Nuri mm -hmm. is a great senior. She's uh, really leading well through action. Uh, she's been fantastic over the course of her four years. Uh, Nuri is a fantastic competitor, uh, really lays her heart down on the line, and uh, is, is a great fighting buffalo. Yeah, she was 6-0, 6-0 versus Utah State and sophomore, and boy, the tennis team will challenge an announcer with names. <laughs> Annabelle Andronopoulos. Correct. How about that? that great job. Yeah, she clinched the win versus the Aggies. She huh? did. It was a fantastic match, uh, probably one of the biggest wins of her college career at Colorado. Uh, so I think it was a real character builder for her mm -hmm. uh, and hopefully a real momentum builder moving builder forward. Builder huh? forward, correct. What would you say is the strength of your tennis team? 
You know what? Right now, I think our heart. You mm -hmm. know, we've done a fantastic job. We've had a. We've got a couple of players out right now, so so we're down to six players. But everyone keeps coming back, keeps fighting hard, uh, keep looking for the opportunities, and, and really taking care of the small things off the court mm -hmm. to allow them the best opportunity to be competing really hard on the court. Coach, you have got. You want to talk about a melting pot? Your team is is, is really amazing in that regard. You got three from Australia. You've got an English player, a Spaniard on this team, and you were telling me before we went on that. The rest of your senior, the rest of your American players are all first-year Americans. Correct. Is that correct? Yes, uh, our three Americans, all of their parents were born internationally, so they're mm -hmm. all first-generation American. Wow. Yeah. Well, was, I mean, you're going out looking for the best talent, so yep. I guess it's just by coincidence that your team has this very international flavor. Yes, yes, uh, and I think uh, all of the benefits that the University of Colorado offer mm -hmm. uh, really also uh, reach out to all the international uh, female tennis players. All I think right. it's a great, obviously, location for all players. And I imagine because of the institution we're talking about, that, that kind of gives you a leg up or at least an advantage when you go out recruiting, I would think. C correct, yeah. and obviously with all of the new facilities that we have, that's made a huge difference. Uh, and, and the further exposure that we've had within our program. You know, that, that's interesting you make that point because we've talked with football, obviously, and basketball and track and lacrosse about the new facilities. How has it affected you? You know, I think uh, for the for the players uh, to, to have locker rooms and to have the services that we have, uh, to the, the exposure. We, we had all the services before, but now the times and, and you know, there's really an unlimited opportunity mm -hmm. to really use all of the resources that we have from the nutritionist to the weight rooms to the cold tubs to the warm tub, you know, hot tubs, all of that good stuff. So I, it's fantastic and there's really a place that they can call home well, you know, amazing. with yeah. the locker rooms. The, the facilities now, what they have done for this athletic department from top to bottom really, really is astounding. Tell us about some of the young players maybe we don't know about on your on Yeah, your so we have, uh, so I have two freshmen from Australia. Uh, they're both uh, still getting their kind of feet wet a little bit. Uh, Brigida is coming off an injury her freshman year, mm -hmm. so she's still kind of getting her getting her feet wet. Uh, Kira is a, is a junior, but she's coming along nicely as well. Um, so great leadership kind of in that upper upper group. Uh, freshman wise, we've got Chloe uh, from Australia as well, uh, who's really stepped up. She's playing three for us in singles, one in doubles. To be doing that as a freshman with success is fantastic. Now the Buffalo's up next. They're on the road versus Air Force, and then you've got uh, your next home match coming up on Sunday against Utah. Yes, yep. Yeah. Yeah, two tough matches uh, will be We'll, we'll really have to wear our heart on our sleeve and, and play with everything we've got because they're going to be two teams that want to battle uh, and we'll be ready to battle as well. All right. Well, good luck the rest of the season. Thank Keep you. it up. Thank you. Thank you. All Go right. Buffs. The CU women's tennis team, 6-1, and one, outstanding so far. That's head coach Nicole Keneally. Hey, we'll talk to you as we wrap up the program from Oregon, Buffalo men's basketball team in Corvallis on Thursday and on Saturday in Eugene against the Oregon Ducks. We'll talk to you next time here on the Stampede.